Hey there, welcome back to Farmcraft. I'm John. We just fixed the hydraulic gear pump on this machine, and that's great, but I still don't have my tracking issue sorted out. For those who aren't familiar, uh, ever since I bought this machine, it, it tracks to the left. And I've got a big job that I'm gonna be doing soon with this machine, and I need to get that fixed. First, we need to diagnose and confirm that the final drive is the issue, the travel motor. Uh, I'm pretty sure that that is the case, but I really need to know for sure. So let's get into it. So this repair gets complicated pretty quickly, so we kind of need to get our bearings as to what's going on in this system. So let me break it down real quick. We've got our engine, and it runs the hydraulic pump, but it's actually two pumps. We're going to call it P1 and P2. Technically, it's one pump with two isolated outputs that are totally independent of each other, so it acts like it's two pumps. And I'm talking about the piston pumps. There's also a gear pump, there's also a pilot pump. We don't need those for this. This is just the travel system in the excavator. They both go to control valves. I'll just call those V. And these are the valves that you push forward or back to make the tracks move. So they are separate from each other. And then those valves go to your travel motors. And this is all the left side, and this is all the right side. Now, once the oil gets to the motor, it needs a place to go. It's kind of like a, an electric circuit. So it actually goes right back to the control valve. And the valve will then, we have a return tank. This is our hydraulic tank. The valve will then send it back to the tank. This is a bi-directional valve. When you push the controls forward, the oil will flow in one direction. And when you pull it the other way, the oil will flow in the opposite direction. So this motor can go in either direction depending on how the valve sends the oil. And then the pumps are pulling from the tank. So the engine drives the pumps, they pull oil from the tank, it goes to the control valve. The control valve, depending on the position of the stick, determines is it gonna flow this way or is it gonna flow this way? And they do it independent of each other. So that's the simple setup. Now, nothing's ever quite that simple, but you guys already, if you watched my swivel joint video, you know about the swivel joint. The swivel joint is just a pass-through, but it allows you to, to cross a pivot. So these things actually all go through the swivel. So this line here actually goes through the swivel, and this line here also goes through the swivel. And same with these. I wanted to do it simply so you can see how everything's working. The swivel just kind of adds complexity and confuses people, but it's just a pass-through. As long as it's not leaking inside the swivel from one chamber to another, then the swivel may as well not be there in this system. To break it down, what we're really going to be looking at is pump one, pump two, two control valves left and right, the swivel joint, and two travel motors left and right. So that's our starting point. The motor, this is the travel motor, I've taken a little cover plate off, might not be getting enough oil, and that's why it's going slow. This is the one that's going slow. Or it's getting the oil, and it's just internally leaking, or it's weak, or who knows what, and it needs a rebuild. Really what I need to do is narrow down where the problem is. So how do I determine that? Well, the other side is working well. So if I take the drive hose from the other side and put it on this side, in other words, swap the hoses, if the problem stays in the same place, then it's the motor. If the problem moves with the hoses, then it's coming from the controls. So pretty simple way to tell. So that's what I'm gonna do here is uh, get these hoses swapped over. Each travel motor has four hoses on my machine. Two of them are big. They're labeled here P1 and P2, and those are the main drive lines. This line is smaller and it's the case drain. It drains any internal leakage in the motor back to the tank. And this line is the high speed select. That line is pressurized when the operator hits the high speed pedal, which puts the motor into high speed mode. So I'm gonna label the bottom one red on both sides, just so I don't get confused. And then the top one white. Smoke over fire. I'm gonna go turn my vacuum system on on the hydraulic tank again. See that just goes into the top of the tank. Old vacuum cleaner. Give me some negative pressure to help prevent it from leaking. All right, that's not so bad. I'm gonna pull those lines through. I'm gonna tie a rope to them so that I can get them back easily. Of 
is the other end of these hoses attached to the swivel joint. My favorite place. Pretty sure it's going to be these two. Yeah, that's one. Yeah. Yeah, I can't do that with one hand, so. But I'm just going to pull those through. Really? Not going to reach. Those hoses are not going to reach. There's no way I can make them reach. I'd have to get hose extensions, which I don't have, are not going to be cheap. I'm almost thinking, just rebuild the travel motor and see what happens. Having to spend a bunch of money just to do a test seems kind of stupid. The travel motor is, no. these things are known to need rebuilds. They go bad. You know, the machine's got 3,200 hours on it. It hasn't seen a lot of maintenance. The oil was in lousy shape when I first got it. So I suspect the travel motor. But for now, I can't leave this excavator sitting here, so I'm going to put these lines back. I guess I'll price and see what a uh, travel motor rebuild kit is going to cost. And if it's not much, I'll try it. Uh, if it is, maybe I will look and see if I can get some hose extensions or something. So I've been looking at the travel motors and good grief. My travel motor doesn't really have a rebuild kit. Um, there could be any number of things that are wrong in there and it's going to cost a fortune, even if I do it myself. Adding up all the seals and O-rings and everything that are in there uh, came out to $1,000 from the dealer, and nobody else that I can find sells kits for it. So pretty much you're stuck buying a new final drive. The cheapest one I was able to find was $2,500. The dealer wanted $5,500. I found another one that was a more reputable quality, for like 3500 I mean, that's just too much darn money to not know for sure. So, I dropped 150 bucks on this. Five feet long. They've got the ends on that I need so that I can just extend my hoses out and connect it to the opposite side. You know, I didn't want to take a final drive off the machine and open it up and see if anything happens to be wrong in there, only to find that there wasn't, but I messed it up taking it apart. This is worth it. 150 bucks to get a diagnosis. Let's do it. That vacuum trick sure makes that a lot more tolerable. So here's the deal. I still have white on top of red, smoke over fire. So here's the top one. Well, it comes over and it plugs into the top of the other travel motor. And then here's the bottom one, which of course plugs into the bottom. So now when I hit the control left forward, what it would have sent to this motor, it now sends to that motor and vice versa. This is also, that's white over red. You see the red there. So basically I've just flipped them. Now I need to track the machine and we're going to see if the problem is still on the left, it's the motor. If the problem is not on the left, then it's coming through the lines, which means it's the controls, uh, like a control valve or something. All right, I'm going to start it up. I'm going to track it straight. I'm not really sure what I'm voting for because the travel motor is super expensive and uh, the control valves are going to be a lot of work. So either way, it's going to be it's going to be something. So I'm holding both travel levers all the way to their max travel position. And it's not going left. The thing's going right. Might be a little hard the way the fisheye of the camera is, but it's going right. I proceeded to drive it back and forth several times, convincing myself Let's give it one last test just to be sure. Yep, going right. Wow. I, I, I had to go back and forth so many times because I just couldn't believe what I was seeing. The problem went to the other side. I was not expecting that, obviously. Thank goodness I bought those lines, huh? Tearing into a $3,000 final drive that there's nothing wrong with it. That would have sucked. Wow. Okay. 
Well, now I need to figure out what we're doing next. Okay, I have to do some testing on the control valves here. And even though I've power washed this before, it's still quite a mess down in there. All right, that looks a little better. So I have labeled the control valve in question. That is the valve that is actuated when I push the left travel lever. I've counted several times to make sure I'm on the right one. This fitting right here, that is the output when I push forward from that control valve. So what I wanna do now is get a gauge on this so that I can see if I'm getting a bunch of leak down. In other words, I will put it forward, but I'm gonna have the track disconnected so that it's just gonna deadhead into that pipe. The pressure relief valve will protect everything. So I'll get to maximum pressure and then I'm going to see how quickly it leaks down. Basically, I'm trying to test for internal leakage within the control valve itself. If this is weak because of the control valve, it's leaking while it's being used. So I need to keep the control forward, put the engine down to idle, or possibly even turn off the engine and see how quickly my pressure drops. And then I may need to do the same thing on the right control valve to compare the two. I think I'm actually getting a little bit lucky here, if you can call this lucky. In order to hook my gauge to it, I need a female 3 8 British pipe and coming out of the valve itself is male. It goes into the hose with a female, and then the other end of the hose goes over to the swivel joint, and it's actually these two hoses right here, the ones that are on the left. They are both accessible to me without too much trouble, and the end of those hoses uh, are both female. Yeah, I'm gonna pop, I'm gonna do the left one first and check it, if it's got crazy fast leak down, then I know, but uh, I'll probably end up testing them both just to verify. <clears throat> Who tightened that thing? Oh, did I get it? one. Yeah, I'm here. I'm going to go ahead and do the second one. And I really have no idea if you guys can see. It's a, it's a pretty tough area to see much of anything. I hope you can. see the two caps those are the hoses that I removed they are now right here so those will pressurize when I hit forward on the travel levers this one is the left one so let's get a gauge on there we'll start her up and we're gonna see what kind of bleed down we get Now I wish I could put one on the right, but I don't have another adapter to go to a second gauge. Let me think if there's a reasonable way to do that. So the thread that goes to the test hoses and the gauge, it's a 16 by two metric thread. I obviously don't have a tap or a die for that. So that's a tough one to make, but I've got a bunch of other adapters that go to other things. Like that's an eighth inch pipe thread. I've got a tap and a die for that. And this is a three eighths. British pipe, well, I've got plugs for that. So in other words, if I drill this out and tap it for this, I can then thread that on and put another test hose right here with a second gauge and have them both at the same time. I think that'll be helpful for, for testing. You'll really be able to see the two gauges coming down at the same time.
here's our new adapter and then here's hydraulic gauge number two so the 10,000 psi gauge is on the right the 6,000 is on the left okay now quick reminder what I'm doing here when I push forward I am directly pressurizing straight off the control valves into these test hoses and straight into the gauge and it's a dead end so <laughs> The machine should not move if I picked the right hoses. Uh, I'm going to go slow at first. Yeah, then I'm going to play around and see if I can determine which one's bleeding down the fastest. Now remember this is a 10,000 PSI gauge and this is a 6,000. So this one's going to move faster even if they were bleeding down at the same rate. So that track's not going to move and that track's not going to move. All right, so let me throttle up. Okay, somebody's an idiot and forgot to tighten down that gauge. I'm going to do one at a time first because there's kind of a lot going on here. I, I need to make sure my setup's working, that I'm not spraying oil down there, and then we'll look closer at the gauges. going to tell. Note that when I'm holding the lever forward and turn the engine off it immediately goes to zero. So when the engine shuts down a dump valve opens to the tank and all hydraulic pressure immediately goes to zero making it basically impossible to see any leak down. So my only chance of seeing leak down is to have the lever forward while I go from full throttle to idle. It's actually reading a little bit high but when I'm at low idle it's it's giving me 3500 when I'm at high it's giving me 37 but when I idle it down it immediately goes down there's no there's no delay at all All I can hope for now is I'm going to see a difference so let me see if this one is slower tell hmm. that's a difference I'm not sure what that means I'm still not sure if this is significant it only does it on the left side it only does it at low idle it won't do it if you push both controls together you just have to push the left one I flipped the gauges and that didn't change anything so it's not the gauge it seems to be the left control valve well, it's really hard for me to tell. I do think this one is dropping faster, but man, obviously I'm biased. I want to find the problem. I don't think I'm imagining it, but uh, I'm going to flip the gauges and just see, see what I can see. I won't bore you with showing you that. There wasn't any difference. All right, so here's the issue. I really think I need a new control valve. That means that little, call it a slice, that little slice right there, number seven, needs to be replaced. Well, in order to replace that, you have to take the entire valve block out. Look at all these hoses. I thought the swivel joint was a lot of hoses. That's going to be worse. Now, the good news is, is most of them are right here. You're not working up underneath in a confined space, so it's not all bad. I can do that, but man, I don't want to do that and be wrong. I don't see any way to do this test any better. The only other thing it could be is the swivel joint, and I don't have reason to suspect that. My, my blade power is fine, my blade's holding fine. Uh, I don't see any other evidence of the swivel joint having issues. I had this symptom before I rebuilt the swivel joint and it did not change with rebuilding the swivel joint. I don't think it's the swivel joint. So anyway, this is what I'm gonna do. Hope I get lucky. I deserve a little bit of luck on this. Let me see, there you can see that. I'm gonna take that spool out. And if I see damage on the spool, that's a slam dunk. I'm worried that it'll just be wear and leakage around it, and there's not gonna be any way for me to know for sure. We're gonna take that spool out of there, we're gonna get a look at it, and we're gonna see if we can see any problems. It is this one that I'm after.
I can't seal it back up without this thing. So it's the, the vacuum is still outside running. So the question is, is there anything wrong with this thing? And the other question is, is am I going to be able to tell if there is? I measured it with a micrometer in multiple areas and found no discrepancy in the size. It was quite consistent. I mean, I do see marks on it. Nothing that I can feel. So I looked at the whole thing under magnification and I couldn't find anything that I would call a problem. See, like there's a little scratch on it. Is that a scratch? No, that was a little piece of fuzz. So is this good or is it bad? I don't know. That was what I was worried about with pulling the spool out and looking at it. So I tried to look into the valve body. You can't get your head in position, so all I could do is hold the camera up and then review the footage. But good luck seeing anything of value this way. Well, that was easy enough. I think I'm going to take the other the other side. The right travel motor is right there, or, or control valve. So if I take that spool out and look at that, maybe I'll see a difference. Uh, it measures the same. So you can see a little bit of longitudinal scoring. Looks about the same to me. All right, I'm taking these gauges off. Now remember, these go directly to the control valves and the, the end, this end here goes to the swivel joint. And I had an epiphany. I mean, I'm not 100% sure it's the control valve yet. I think it is, but it could be the swivel, which would make me want to vomit since I've already done the swivel. But um, it is still possible and I don't want to do all of this and be wrong. Remember when I changed the, the hoses, I put those hoses on the opposite side and vice versa well that'll tell me if it's the motors or not if it changes sides well I can do that again if I hook this up to the opposite ports on the swivel joint they're the same size now left will be going through what right was going through and vice versa if the if it switches sides then the problem is the swivel joint if it doesn't switch sides then the problem is the valves why didn't I think of that before I swear, whenever you fit, whenever you figure something out, it seems so obvious. But before you figure it out, maybe it should be, but it's not, at least to me. So there you go. I'm going to hook these up backwards intentionally. And uh, then we're going to try the tracking again and see which side is slow. That should tell me definitively. Valve or swivel joint. How do you like that? So the left hose, the left tracking motor, would need to go to the far connection. And it was just barely not long enough. So I extended it, but if I'm going to extend that one that adds additional resistance, I need to extend both of them so that it's an equal test. So there you go. If it goes left, it's the control valve. If it goes right, it's the swivel joint. I'm a little nervous about this. Man, I hope it's not the swivel joint. Now that I'm excited about the control valve, you know, come to think of it, that's a pretty lousy set of options. <laughs> Let's see. was really confusing for a minute but I realized that was not a valid test if you think about it you can probably figure out why I only flipped two hoses I'm gonna have to think about this all right this is actually pretty cool man hydraulics gets complicated quickly let me give a nod to all the hydraulic mechanics out there this stuff is not easy so um, this is the way the system's supposed to work there's two pumps and this is the tank. So the pumps are always sending fluid to the valves, which if it's in neutral and it's not doing anything, will basically send it back to the tank. 
a little more complicated than that, but in a, in a nutshell, that's what's going on. So let's, uh, let's simplify this because this is a mirror image. This is the left, this is the right. They're doing the exact same thing. So I'm just going to knock out the right side there. So in normal operation, the left track gets pressure from pump two and it goes to the valve. The valve decides where the pressure is going to go. If we're going forward, it sends it through this line. This is the swivel joint right here. It's just a pass through, but if there's leakage in there, then you're not going to get the proper flow and pressure to your motor. So assuming the swivel works right, it just passes through, goes to the motor, and then the low pressure side comes back to the valve and goes to the tank. This is for forward travel. When you go reverse, the valve just flips those lines. So this becomes the high pressure line. The motor spins the other direction. And then this becomes a low pressure line and goes back to tank. And you can see basically both sides are doing the same thing, but they're running off of different pumps. Now, what did I do? I swapped these lines. So what did my excavator do? When I pulled out, it went to the right and my heart was breaking because I was thinking that meant it was the swivel joint. That's when I was going forward. And then when I went in reverse, it went to the left. So that meant when, it, when I was going forward, the right track was lazy because it was going slow and I went to the right. When I was coming backward, the left track was lazy and it made me go to the left. So let's look at this now. When I'm going forward, the left valve is supplying oil to the right motor, which is then coming back to the right valve. So it's complicated, but the low pressure side really doesn't matter. That's not going to affect your motor um, unless it was obstructed or something, but that, that would be, it's not. The left valve is supplying the right motor, which was lazy when going forward. Now, what happens when we go in reverse? Well, these got flipped. So the left valve is now sending high pressure through this line to the left motor. So in reverse, the left valve is supplying the left motor, which was again lazy. So the left valve is what this points to. So my initial thinking uh, was wrong because I only flipped one hose on each valve. Had I flipped both hoses, then no matter which direction I was going, it would have been supplying the right motor and I was just thinking backwards. If it went to the right and then went to the right again in reverse, then um, it definitely would have been the, the left valve. But because I only swapped the, the two lines instead of four, it made it do this, which uh, it's really, really kind of interesting, uh, but makes sense once you draw it out and think through it. Of course, I have to draw it out. A real hydraulic mechanic would probably be like, oh yeah, duh. So if it was the swivel side, you wouldn't expect it to be going uh, to be flipping like this. Uh, if it was leaking in here, it would just, that motor would be lazy. So hope that made sense. Uh, this is really pointing to that left control valve. Let me do a shout out to heavyequipmentforums.com again. I posted this on there and uh, man, those guys are great. Really thought through the problem and pointed out one thing that I was overlooking. And that is that the pump could still be the issue. P1 and P2 have not really been isolated. I checked the pressures and the pressures were fine, but he's talking about there could be a slight pump bias. A lot of machines in order to track straight will actually tie the outputs of the two pumps so that they're supplying equally to those two valves. Mine doesn't have that, they're separate. And so if one of these pumps, say the left pump, is just has an internal leakage that's a little bit, not too bad, well, then it's not going to track straight. So if I were to tie these two lines together, now the valves are going to be getting the same flow, the same pressure, and it should track straight. So that might be a potential solution. What I can do right now to determine is just swap the lines. I can run the left side off of P1, run the right side off of P2, and that will tell me 100% is the pump the problem, and this would be a simple, cheap solution, or is it the valve? Now, I checked pressures at the pump. My pressures were fine, but that doesn't mean that under load, it's putting out the exact same flow. And that's the issue here. If I'm just getting less flow to this side than this side, then it's not gonna track straight. Whereas if it was one of the other functions, you know, like the boom moving, well, it's, the boom is the boom. There's no, it doesn't have to pair with anything else and be exactly the same. So uh, not a big deal, but with, with tracking, it becomes a big deal. So if I'm running the left side off of P1 and the left side is no longer lazy, then it's the pump. 
interesting that even though I've measured the pressures and those are good, it could still be the pump. All right, I put those lines back. So now what I need to do is flip the two outputs from the two pumps. Now, of course, they're not the same connection. It would be really nice if they were exactly the same, but this one has, this one has this thing on it that is uh, basically like a shock absorber for the hydraulic system. It's just gonna be a little bit more work, but yeah, won't, won't take too long. We'll get those flipped out. Okay, so now the only thing that's reversed are the pumps. If it continues to track left, it's control valve. If it goes right, it's pump. Now, being pump isn't that bad of a problem because the rest of the machine works fine. And if that's the case, the solution is just gonna be to tie the two together. And uh, that should fix it. that for a result <laughs> okay let's explain this it went right but just barely I mean the tiniest bit in fact I could probably just leave it like it is a few moments later all right so here's the dealio Emilio I just took this thing out for a little joy ride uh, put it on a straight section of road I wanted to I knew the distance I was going and I timed it and I'm going about 2.4 miles per hour but I had to redirect several times that that deviation, which is now to the right, it's better than it was when it was left, but it's bad enough that it still needs to be fixed. But even with all the course corrections I had to do, which was probably like five of them over just over 100 yards, 100 meters, I was making 2.4 miles per hour. 2.9 is the spec. I think without the course corrections, I'd be really close. So the pumps are putting out, you know, if there is leakage in one of the pumps, it's not that bad, but it's enough to mess up the travel. So. A lot of excavators actually have something built in for this exact issue and basically they couple the outputs and sometimes there will be a valve in between but the, the outputs of the two pumps will be coupled together so that when you're traveling both both travel motors are getting the exact same supply and that's going to force them to go straighter unless one of the motors is really screwed up so that's what i'm going to do I need to take this back apart here and I'm going to couple the output of the pump. The real solution here, if I wanted this thing to be 100% perfect, which I would like it to be, but it would be a new hydraulic pump. Now this gear pump wasn't terribly expensive. When you start getting into the whole pump, you're talking many, many thousands of dollars. That's probably, you know, if I can fix this by coupling these lines together, we're doing that. <laughs> Okay, so here's the idea. This is going to go into the accumulator, that little pressure tank, and then this is going to go directly into the other pump. They will be tied together, and then the existing lines will just hook on here. Now, at that point, uh, I no longer have two separate pumps, so the functions that were separated before will no longer be, and I may find that it's an in intolerable situation as far as digging that way. I'm fully prepared that that's going to be the case, but this will at least tell me, will I track straight now, and how fast can I go, which is an indirect measure of pump performance. So if I track straight and I go pretty much to spec or very close to spec, then, then I'm happy. If it doesn't dig right because of this, the solution is going to be replace this coupling here with an electrically actuated valve that I can control from the cab. So if I have to track any distance, I just push and hold the valve. This will open. Basically, I'm going to be able to open and close this as needed. This is essentially 
probably going to end up being a test because I'm afraid it's not going to dig right. Man, if it if it digs right, then it, then I'm done. If it doesn't, I'm going to have to figure out how to get a valve in here and maybe replumb this a little bit. But uh, let's give it a test. All right, guys, this has got me stumped. Uh, I'm gonna need to think on this for a little while, but let me show you what it's doing. Um, basically, it will go forward. If I do both forward, it'll go back. If I do both back, it's still going to the left. How does that make any sense? But if I do a single control, it won't do anything. The high speed does work. So if I have both forward and I hit the high speed, it'll go faster. even hooked up. So what I think is happening, when I push this forward, it's opening to the travel motor, but there's a pathway through my bypass to this idle to then return to tank. All the flow is just going through this uh, control valve in the idle circuit and back to the tank and nothing happens. That's exactly right. When the lever is in the neutral position, there's a pathway through the valve for oil to get back to tank. And that's what it's doing rather than going to the travel motor. Man, this is disappointing. I'm starting to think that, think that this thing isn't fixable without installing new components that it just doesn't make sense to do. So I think that basically I have wear in the drivetrain. There's probably some in the travel motor, but more so in the control valve and in the pumps. What that equates to is as it was hooked up when I got it, it goes to the left. But when I flip the pumps, it actually goes to the right. So the pump seems to be a major factor, but now the pumps are tied together and it's going left. Basically the pumps have been eliminated. They're tied together. They're acting as one pump now and I'm going to the left. So it's got to be the left control valve or the left travel motor. My testing concluded that the pump was the primary issue, but now I've eliminated that, I still have issues. Of course I have issues. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I mean, I think what it boils down to is I just, I'm gonna have to live with this because to do all the, the money, I mean, a new, those piston pumps, I mean, you're talking five grand to replace that part of the pump. The control valves, that would be a big job and I don't know how much it would cost to do a couple control valves, probably a thousand dollars. And then the travel motor, the cheapest I found was 2,500 plus all the time of doing that. Just to go straight, nah, that's not worth it. That was a lot of work to be disappointed. I'm not seeing a good answer here. You know, even if I, if I put this valve in and make it so that I can turn this on and off, even like this, I'm still not going straight. So that there's no reason to do that. It's not gonna solve my problem. You know, I'm also wondering, am I just expecting too much out of an excavator? I mean, I would expect it to be able to track straight for a hundred yards and me not have to constantly course correct, but maybe I'm wrong. You know, obviously other things that I drive track straight. So that, that just seems ridiculous to me that yeah, it was in 100 meters, I had to correct like five or six times. Surely that's not acceptable for an excavator, right? Yeah, so I also wanted to see how it would dig and it's totally intolerable. It's a totally different experience digging with those things tied together. Um, I didn't think it would make that much difference. Yeah, it's uh, almost unusable. Because, you know, oftentimes you're, you're doing the the bucket curl and the stick at the same time. And now they're, it's one or the other, or I don't know, it, it's just not acting right. And uh, this would be extremely challenging to use like it is. Okay, so I obviously can't leave it like this. One more thing I wanna try that actually does have the potential to fix this, or at least to make it better. 
We will see. All right, I do not have it back in its original configuration. I have the pumps flipped because I think that way it deviated to the right, but not quite as bad. Those pumps are supposed to produce the equal, you know, I keep saying pumps. It's really one pump in there with two isolated outputs. So the output of this pump is not going to affect the output of the other pump, regardless of what's going on. But it's really one piston pump in there that just switches between two different outputs as it's spinning around. So it tracks to the right in this configuration, but not as bad as it tracked to the left previously. Interestingly, it seems to go quite straight when I first turn it on and run it while the oil is fairly cold. Uh, but as the oil heats up, then it goes more to the right. In other words, as the oil gets hot and loses its viscosity, I'm getting more internal leakage and it's causing the problem. All right, I've got a straight section of driveway. Here's my starting point and I've got 110 yards I'm going to go. I'm going to stay, see how straight it'll go, stay as straight as I can. Doing top speed here. Hang on to your hats. So you saw how many times I had to redirect there. That was only in 110 yards. That came out to about just under two and a half miles per hour, and it's supposed to go 2.9. Now with all the stopping and redirecting, I don't know, I mean, the travel motors might be getting all the flow that they need. I'm gonna try it on this curved section of road. That's about how much the excavator curves. That way I don't have to be stopping starting. I ought to be able to get a more accurate measurement of how is the pump performing overall? How close do I get to the, the spec? That was surprising. That made very little difference. So here's what I'm thinking. The piston pump on this is a variable displacement pump. And right there is where you adjust the angle of the swash plate that will increase the volume that is pumped with each rotation. Of course, more volume means more horsepower. So the, port, the point of that is to match it to the engine. Well, my engine never even seems to strain. I mean, I hear it a little bit, but barely any. I think what is going on here may very well be is my pump is right at the limit of its capacity when traveling. And if there's any leakage at all, it's going to show up. If the pump would put out more volume and the leakage would kind of be negligible in the system, then I think it would do better. Man, this really shows how having flow meters and hydraulics would be a huge advantage, but man, those things are expensive too. Anyway, I am gonna crack that nut loose I'm going to turn that in a quarter turn. That's going to increase the angle of the swash plate on the piston pump. That's going to increase the amount of flow that I get out of the pump with each rotation of the engine. And let's see what it does. Wouldn't it be something if that fixed the problem? That would allow me to compensate for any wear internal leakage that I have in my hydraulic motors, in the control valves, in the pump itself. Who knows? Let's see. All right, that didn't seem to make much difference. So I'm gonna keep doing quarter turns and until I see an effect and then I'll bring you back. I tried turning that horsepower control up. I went a full turn on it and it really made very little difference. It might've made me go two seconds faster on the tracking, but I was still going two and a half miles per hour. It was not, uh, not getting me close to spec and I didn't wanna go a whole lot further. That said, I don't hear the engine straining a lot. You know, maybe I can continue to turn that in until I'm actually getting some results. The only thing my manual says about this adjustment is to not change it and that it affects the displacement of the pump and therefore the horsepower. It doesn't say anything about adjusting it or how to determine if the adjustment is correct. So until I know more, I really don't want to fool with it and end up damaging something. This one about whipped me. It's better than it was. I can, dirt, I can certainly tolerate it like it is. So I think I'm just going to use it like this unless you guys, someone out there knows better and can tell me where I should go from here. I don't know. Um, this, this is definitely, uh, a long time ago, this exceeded my hydraulic mechanic abilities. <laughs> I'm going to pose some questions to the experts out there. 
Anything else I should do with this? What do you think is wrong with it? What would you have done differently in troubleshooting this to get to whatever the answer is faster? My conclusion is I have wear in multiple different parts of the machine. I probably have a slightly slow travel motor, uh, a slightly worn control valve, and a slightly worn pump that are kind of, the three together make trying to troubleshoot it and pinpoint it to one thing basically impossible. But when I flip the pumps, the pumps are probably the worst part of the of the equation because it, it did flip the problem to the right, though not as bad. So the internal leakage of that bad pump was offset by the internal leakage of the valve and or motor on the opposite side, which straightened me out a little bit. Replacing the motor, $2,500 plus all the labor. Replacing the control valves is probably $1,000 plus all the labor. Replacing the pump is probably five grand. It's just not, I mean, that doesn't make any sense. I, I can... I can redirect myself as I'm tracking. You know, if it actually breaks, then, then we'll start talking about something like that. Uh, my other question is this horsepower control. There's very little in the service manual and it didn't really seem to make a whole lot of difference turning it in a full turn, which I think it would. For now, I'm gonna put it back to where it was until I learn more about it. Uh, but if anyone knows, I would really like to know, how are you supposed to adjust that thing? Do you turn it in until you hear your engine start like really showing some strain, maybe a decline in RPM when you're hitting it with deadhead pressure? Or, you know, or what, what do you do to, to know you've got that in the right place? Uh, mine doesn't seem to be doing much of anything. So I hate to leave this video like this. Um, you know, you can't win them all. Uh, I don't feel too bad about all the work I've done because I learned a whole lot and my next hydraulic adventure will be uh, will be a little easier and maybe we'll still get somewhere on this check the description if i learn anything that i need to change or that i should have included in the video then i will definitely post it in the description and if we get something in the future a solution something video worthy then um, i will give credit to whoever gave me the ideas and uh, we'll be seeing this again so thanks for watching guys we'll see you on the next one <laughs>